Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. So I am back at it again with you guys with a part two of the Lindsay Clancy video or the situation that is currently going on. I'm not gonna repeat everything that I repeated in my first video. If you guys have not watched that video, I will put a card right up here and I also have a playlist uh, for you guys so you can just get caught up. So if you don't know, Lindsay Clancy has been to court. Now she's actually in the hospital. Uh, they did a video or a Zoom call court hearing. The prosecution was there, the defense was there, and she was laying in the bed. Now I watched the court hearing, I watched the prosecution, what they had to say as well as the defense, what they had to say. And it's taken me a few days to really put my thoughts together and what I wanted to make in this video. So the first thing I'm going to tell you guys is I'm probably going to have some unpopular opinions, but this is my feelings or my thoughts as of right now, me filming this video. Things could change as more things come out, but as of right now, with the information that we have, I'm going to tell y'all my thoughts and opinions. And I'm also going to let y'all know that mostly everybody that I've talked to dis disagrees with me. Okay. Mostly. I, we talked about this over on my Patreon and I saw a very, you know, back and forth with what people thought. And I want to know what you guys think as of now too. And if more stuff comes out, you can change your opinion. You don't have to agree with me. Um, but I'm going to tell y'all what I think. And I'm going to read to you guys a letter that Lindsay had wrote to one of her friends. And we're going to talk about some things that she said in there. We're just going to talk about all of it. Okay. And then we'll just see what y'all think. We touched on this in the first video, but it has since been confirmed that Lindsay is considered right now a paraplegic. They're saying from the belly button down that she is paralyzed. And that is from jumping out of her second story window, which was 20 feet high, which to me is pretty, I have to know more about that too, because I know I when I was in elementary school, we used to climb on top of these school buses in the neighborhood and jump off of them. And I think about that now, like my ankles, legs would hurt and we'd get back up and do it. Like, how did I do that in elementary school and survive it? Right. So how did this woman jump out of a second story window and end up as a paraplegic? There's a piece of that that seems to be missing for me. And I hope that we find out, was it the medication she was on that made her, you know, less stable where she didn't, uh, did she jump out head first? Like, how did she end up being a paraplegic from jumping out second story window? Some of y'all was jumping out second story window to sneak out at nighttime and go off and do things you weren't supposed to. I mean, come on. The next thing is the prosecution comes at Lindsay hard. The defendant did not take advantage of the situation when her husband left the home that night. She created the situation and she used Apple Maps to make sure she would have enough time to stretch each child before her husband returned from where she had sent him. And this is where I feel like a lot of people are veering off to, they believe that Lindsay Clancy did this on purpose, that it was planned out, she planned the whole thing out. They talk about the fact that on the night that this happened, Lindsay researched how far the restaurant was that she sent her husband to to get dinner as well as had him go to a CBS to get medication. Morning of Tuesday, January 24th, 2023, the defendant took her five-year-old daughter, Cora, to the pediatricians for an appointment. She interacted with a receptionist, nursing staff, and a doctor. There were apparently no issues with the defendant's de demeanor or behavior as she completed the appointment and was allowed to leave with Cora without any issues or concerns. When she returned home, she went outside with Cora and her three-year-old son Dawson to play in the snow. 
They built a snowman. The defendant sent photos to her mother and to the defendant, uh, straight back to her husband. She texted with them. Nothing in the text was out of the ordinary or any sign of any distress or trouble. Back inside later that day at 4.02 p.m., the defendant searched on her phone, Kids Miralax. She then searched at Takeout 3V via her cell phone at 4.13 p.m. Immediately after doing that, she used Apple Maps on her phone to determine how long it would take someone to drive from her home in Duxbury to 3V Restaurant in Plymouth. So she would know how long someone would be gone if they ran that errand. She next went on the CVS website at 4.47 p.m. and then called CVS on Summer Street in Kingston. She spoke to the manager of CVS and asked if they had the kids Miralax. The manager told her no, but they had other similar medications. The defendant texted her husband, who was working in his home office in their basement. She texted, any chance you want to do takeout from 3V? I didn't cook anything. It's been a long day. This was an unusual request, as when the family ordered takeout, they'd usually go somewhere closer to home, but it was a place that they had been in the past. Patrick Clancy texted back yes, and then the defendant asked him to check the menu. At 5.15 p.m., Patrick Clancy headed out the door to run these errands at the defendant's request. As he left, she texted him Pedialax liquid stool softener. Phone records show that he called the defendant at 5.33 p.m., and she did not answer the phone. She then calls him back at 5.34 p.m. and the call lasted 14 seconds. He's there at the store unsure of which medication to get and she tells him exactly what she wants. He had no issues communicating with her. It was a completely normal call, although he did mention that she seemed like she was in the middle of something. When he arrives home, the first thing he noticed was the silence. He did not see or hear the defendant or the children. He actually called her cell phone at 6.09 p.m. looking for them, and she did not answer. He went to their bedroom on the second floor and the door was locked. He was able to open it, and when he looked inside, he saw blood on the floor in front of a full-length mirror and the window open. He immediately runs downstairs and into the backyard where he finds the defendant laying on the ground. He called 911. During this time, he asked the defendant, what did you do? She responded to him, I tried to kill myself and jumped out the window. During the 911 call, Patrick can be heard asking the defendant, where are the kids? He later told police that she replied, in the basement. Something ain't right here. Something is not adding up. The prosecution is seemingly trying to make a point that Lindsay had normal interactions with other people around her for that whole entire day that the incident happened. And then she researched how far the restaurant 3V was from their home so her, she could send her husband to a further away place in order to get dinner from a place that they didn't usually get it from. They had gotten it from there before, but it wasn't usual. And to me... That's just not a good enough point. I mean, a lot of us order takeouts at certain times, and sometimes we run right up the street to the place that's right there closest, and sometimes we want something different. The fact that she researched that people feel like that this was her planning what she did, okay? The prosecution is making this point, and I do want to remind y'all that when y'all are listening to the prosecution speak, that is literally their job, is to convince the court that she needs to be prosecuted, just like it's the defense's job to defend her. I don't find that out of the ordinary. I know a lot of y'all do, and a lot of people do, and some of my family does. Also, the fact that she was looking for this medication. Now, it was said that the people at the CVS said she sounded normal. She had been hanging out with her kids normally. She had built snowmen with her children, and everything seemed fine. And then all of a sudden, when her husband goes to the restaurant to pick up the food, and then he called her from the CVS about the medication... She sounded distracted, and then when he gets home, he finds everything. And this is the prosecution's thing, is that she sent him there just so she could do this. I don't think so, guys. I'm going to tell you guys my unpopular opinion. Something else happened. Whether she had a psychosis moment or whether it's all the medications. Let's talk about the medications that this woman was prescribed I want to go over that because as somebody who grew up in the system, okay, and they was 
like this with medication to us. You guys know my story. I literally remember being in groups and programs. They made us take our medication and I would sit there in a circle and drool on myself for an hour to two hours before I could be even, and, and everybody just went on about the groups. Here's Christina sitting here just drooling on myself and they make sure they stick their fingers in your mouth. You can't not take it. You're a kid in the system. You have to take, don't even get me started on the medication. Lindsay was prescribed or over prescribed 13 psychiatric medications. Now these doctors are saying it wasn't supposed to be taking them all at one time. Her husband even comes forth to say, hey, she was only taking the doctor prescribed doses. As so, uh, No disrespect to Patrick. He's been through a lot. He has no idea what she was taking. If she was in a psychosis, some of the medications make you forget. She could have retaken uh, medications. Some of them make you not, you know, she, he has no idea. Okay, unless he was divvying them out to her himself, he really doesn't know. He was trusting her. And if these medic, the, I, I think some of us really underestimate the power of these types of medications. They actually change your brain and the concoctions of them together can be very detrimental. Let's, let's talk about some of these real quick first. The list is Ambien. I've done heard some things about that. Now, listen, if any of y'all take this stuff and you're doing it with your doctors, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about this situation. Okay. Ambien, Colotopin, Valium. I didn't even still, I didn't even think they still prescribed that. I thought that was a thing of the 70s. Prozac, Ativan, Rimron, Seroquel, which is an antipsychotic and will knock you on your butt. Do you hear me? That alone. Trazodone, that'll knock you on your butt. Zoloft, Elevil, Buspirone or Brain, and Atratax, whatever that one is, Hydra, Hydroxine. Sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing these right. That is terrifying. I can name just two of them right there that would, I feel like would have me in an altered state or one of them really the Seroquel alone. You know what I mean? Like the Colotopin or whatever. She was prescribed Trazodone. That's what they, that's what all the people in jail and prisons was taken because that's the only thing that they could get the closest thing they could get to something. And so Trazodone would be going around in there like whatever. And then people would be sleeping for three, four days at a time just to Trazodone. So that is scary. The other thing I feel like should be mentioned is in January, Lindsay checked herself into a facility and said that she was ha she was having mental issues. She said she was you know, and stuff like that. This is when they said, "Oh, you don't have you don't have postpartum depression. You don't have any of that." And a lot of people are hanging on to that. My opinion is people get misdiagnosed every day. Okay, I know people that have had full blown cancer. And have gone to the doctors and they say, oh, your blood work looks good. Must just be a lump. And then later on find out that it's spread. Okay, listen, doctors are imperfect people too. They are just people like us with more education, but they don't always get it right. Look at this list of prescriptions she was taking and you can tell somebody didn't get something right here. That is terrifying. The next thing is, it was said that when she was in this facility in January, she told them she wanted to get off of the benzos, which I know that's, I can't tell you all of, all of the ones that are benzos, but I know that some of those are benzos on there, okay? But that she felt like she was addicted because see, once you start taking these medications for so long, your body becomes physically dependent on them and you can become addicted or dependent or both. And you guys... I watched YouTube videos of people withdrawing from benzos and it's absolutely horrifying, terrifying. I watched this one guy say that he was in his, he was literally hallucinating and that's just from withdrawing or not taking his, this, the, one of these types of medications, one of them. He said he was in his 17 year old son's closet, holding his baby clothes in the fetal position, crying. This is a grown man 
holding his almost grown son's baby clothes, crying, convinced in his mind that his child hated him because he was withdrawing from the, I, just the medication alone, you guys, something ain't right with this. I also find that it's very interesting that the court system has had a influx of letters character reference letters that have been pouring in from Lindsay's like people she worked with at the hospital. You guys remember she was a, she was a, she was a pediatric nurse. She worked with babies from family members, people that knew her. There was even letters from people that knew her, known her all the way since sixth grade saying, this is not like her. Something happened. You guys, there is some, something is not right about this. And I don't, I want to say before I go any further into this, I'm not taking up for Lindsay because I think it don't matter what happens from here on out. Her life is over. Okay. She's probably, she's, she's over. Whether she goes to prison or goes to a mental hospital or she ends up ending it all, which is what her defense attorney says, her life is over just like those babies. Okay. And it's, we as a community have two options with Lindsay. Okay. She's going to either go to prison and be sent off to sit in a prison somewhere and rot. And then we all go, you know what? She's a terrible human, a terrible woman. She did this to her kids and send her off. We don't care what happens to her. Give her the chair, whatever. Or you go, what can we learn from this so we can make sure this does not happen to another mother and any other children? And I'm fighting for the latter, okay? No matter what, I don't think she's going to get out and she's want, she's she's going to get out, wants to get out. She's, you know, I'm not even worried about her like that. I'm trying to figure out what happened so we can help other mothers. A lot of you guys may not remember that when Andrea Yates had her situation, see all of us, uh, most of us understand now, but when it happened, the public wanted to crucify her, okay, and her husband. Nobody was, nobody was looking into the things that I feel like I, I I'm saying we should look into now and her defense attorney is saying, hey, these over, over prescriptions of medicine, these signs that she was giving. And then there's people that are saying that like, you know, well, when she would go into this place, she looked happy. Well, that's typically how these emotions work, right? Any of y'all go to therapy? You got therapy on Friday, Monday, you're having a complete meltdown. You feel like your life is over. You can't wait until Friday. By the time you get to therapy on Friday, everything's better. You feel better. And you're sitting in there like, yeah, I had a bad day on Monday, but I'm good now. And your therapist is not concerned. Any of y'all, no, nobody else has ever experienced anything like that before. I, I mean, again, I'm not making any excuses for Lindsay, per, so to say, because I don't know her and even if they got her back to baseline, when she really realizes what she's done, it, it, you, you know, I, I just think you can't get over it. But I do think it's important to, instead of just saying, send her to prison, who cares, put her in a wheelchair, send her to prison, then we learn nothing from that. What happened? Who didn't diagnose her? Why did they not diagnose her? Normal moms don't go and admit themselves in a hospital. How many of y'all have done that, that have not had any PPD or PPP? I had severe anxiety when I was pregnant and after I had my son. I passed out in the hospital because I would not sleep. He had jaundice because I was so scared something was going to happen to him. And I didn't, I didn't go get put on medication. I didn't go to a doctor. I just had this crippling anxiety. I can't imagine how bad it had to be for this woman who works with babies, who has never been in any kind of trouble, never even had a speeding ticket to go and admit herself somewhere. Something is missing in this case. Something is wrong. And we need to figure it out so we can help people going forward. It is a day and age where we're just, certain people are just throwing pills at people instead of finding the problem. Oh, okay. You feel sad. You don't feel the same around your kids. Here, take this, 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 and this. She wasn't sleeping. She ended up at some point, Your Honor, uh, December 31st, she was on Seroquel. They told her then uh, the Valium would be stopped. She was a shell of herself, no personality, and went to the doctor again. The doctor again prescribes the Seroquel, uh, and then they took her off the Seroquel. And then she went to the doctor, and the, at that point, they, pre they prescribed Trazodone, Ativan, Amitriptyline, 
right up to the very end, when she was so bad that she voluntarily turned herself in, if you will, to the McLean Hospital. We know that that's a psychiatric hospital. She was at the McLean Hospital for a period of about five days. While at the McLean Hospital, they basically tried to get her uh, off the Seroquel. Uh, she wanted to get off the benzodiazepines. She felt that she was being addicted to the benzodiazepines. She then ends up on Trazodone, Ativan. Um, her mood was terrible after she got out of M uh, McLean Hospital. She still had the suicidal thoughts. As the government has indicated, she even told her husband that she had suicidal thoughts. You think this is something that she's planning to kill these three kids by going and getting a menu, going on to Google Maps or whatever it is, and finding out the distance? When she tells her husband she's having suicidal thoughts, probably a month prior, thoughts of her children, they go to the doctor again, and she's on the medications, on and off, on and off. This is a significant issue between the postpartum depression as well as possibility of postpartum psychosis that is pretty much ignored. But nevertheless, with the overlay of the SSRIs and the history, and Your Honor has some uh, emails and things that people would reach out to me from all over the world indicating that their daughter had the same problem, that they had the same problem. This is clearly a tragic, which is a word that's used too much in the criminal justice system, but this really is a tragedy, this case. Next thing I want to get to is this letter, y'all, that she wrote to her friend a while back, and I don't know, I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but when I see some of this stuff in here, it makes me feel like, Weird. She writes a letter to her friend and she says, Brittany, the biggest congratulations on your sweet baby boy. Get ready for the wildest ride of your life, motherhood. It is the most profoundly challenging yet deeply fulfilling experience you will ever have. You are about to embark on a journey with the highest highs, the lowest lows, the joy, the pain, and everything in between. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that is a weird, weird sentence to me, okay? I don't know, if y'all got a friend that has a new baby, y'all just keep that part to yourself because that's scary, okay? Maybe later if they need some encouragement, you need to tell them you've been through some things, but like, that's very alarming to me. Let me go back through that part real quick. The highest highs and the lowest lows. Now I can understand a mom or a dad or a parent maybe thinking the lowest lows if you've got, you know, severe health issues with, I don't even want to, I hate even speaking these things out loud. But you know, like if your child goes through some serious, serious things. But this is coming from a woman who had healthy children the lowest lows, the pain, and everything in between. I don't know. I've been momming for a long time, and my kids have nothing to do with my lowest lows. Stress me out? Sure. Make me worry at times? Absolutely. But they dang sure ain't my lowest lows. Nothing close to it. You know, so that, that to me, your child, your lowest lows... When they're under five, mm, everyone will have advice for you and an opinion. Take what you like, ignore what you don't, and do what works for you and your family. Okay, that's true. There really aren't any rights or wrongs when it comes to parenting. It's an art, not a science. There is no exact a recipe for how to do it, and they don't come with a set of instructions. This is all cliche stuff. Your baby is a unique individual, so what works for others may or may not work for you at the end of the day, so trust your instincts. Sounds like a loving mother, right? And love your baby. Know that everything is a phase. When things get tough, know that the phase will pass, and before you know it, you'll be on to a new phase. Enjoy the fun, precious, joyous moments because there are so many of those. You will naturally take beautiful care of your baby, but always remember to also take care of yourself and your relationship with Cole as well. Motherhood can be 
all consuming if you let it be. I think it says let yourself dive deep into it, but also take time to come up for air and remember who you are before you became a mother. So I do wonder with this, if she was really kind of pouring her own heart out to it, like when she talked about everyone, because she underlined it, everyone will have advice for you and an opinion. Take what you like. It makes me wonder, okay, let me give you an example. Like it makes me wonder if she, why people thought she was okay, is if she was putting on the face for it because she didn't want to get all their advice and, and all of their, y'all know how it is mama's out there and maybe daddy's too, but I know my mama's do, right? Sometimes we don't want to hear what you have to say. We just say, oh, I'm good, right? We're not good. Sometimes we're not good, but we don't, we, we don't, we don't want to, we don't want to get into it. And I wonder if she did that. I wonder if she was embarrassed. I wonder if there were things she was struggling with she didn't understand. I wonder if there were things that were happening in her own mind that she didn't know. With all that medication, oh my gosh, even if she didn't even have any of the other stuff, with that medication, you just don't, I don't know. I had a sudden, intense, temporary psychosis following the birth of my daughter. This was definitely not postpartum depression. This was so strange and so out there that I still sometimes have a hard time believing that it happened to me. At the time, I was married to a wonderful man, and still am. I was an attorney with my own professional mediation practice, which I loved, and we decided it was time to have a baby. Our future looked bright. We had no idea how wrong things were about to go. When I was in law school, I learned that some women can harm or even kill their children due to an imbalance of mind following pregnancy. But I thought that meant those other women, those women who already had major problems, not normal women, and certainly not successful, professional, educated women like myself. And so, I was completely unprepared when it happened to me. I'm going to give you just a small glimpse of the worst part of my experience. So, <clears throat> I was on my bed and my daughter was lying next to me, and that's her, cutie patootie. And um, I saw myself take a scissors I said, this has just got to be a bad thought, a bad thought. The symptoms may present in a waxing and waning fashion, which means that the woman can appear normal and lucid in between the psychotic symptoms. The tragedy of postpartum psychosis is when women don't share the true thoughts and images going through their minds because they fear the negative repercussions that may come from doing so. What if they take my kids away? What if they lock me up? After I recovered from my first episode of postpartum psychosis, I became aware of an incredible resource called Postpartum Support International, or PSI. They are the leaders in education, treatment, resources, and current research. There was conversation and the prosecution brought up the fact that when Lindsay came out of her state, one of the first things she asked was, do I need an attorney? And this was a conversation that one of me and my best friends had because she was like, uh-uh, I believe right then and there. She knew that she did what she did and whatever. One of the first things is what they said. Does that mean that they told her, hey, you're in trouble, you're arrest, you're gonna be arrested, you can't get out of here. And then she said, do I need an attorney? Because to me, a person that purposely did this they know they need an attorney, okay? They're, if they're trying to get away with it, they know they need an attorney. They don't need to ask, do I need an attorney? I think she wasn't all there. Also, I saw a lot of people online saying she didn't even cry in court. She didn't cry when she, she didn't do anything, you guys. She barely blinked. She's like a shell of a woman right now. Like, She's probably, again, so overly medicated. I don't know. I'm not taking up for her, okay? I, I don't know her 
all I I just can't get behind what from what I'm seeing here that this was a person that was just evil and I know that's a word that's being used a lot online a, a person that is just evil and just planned this out something else happened and for at, for the very least for the sake of mothers going forward and us understanding this type of thing, we need to get to the bottom of it. If at the bottom of it, it's that she's evil and she planned all this and she she just wanted to do this, prosecutor to the fullest extent of the law. I'd be the first one in line to tell y'all, yep, okay, I was wrong. This came out. You know I'll come back and tell you. But right now, something ain't sitting right with me, you guys. Something happened. Let me know what you guys think. Other than that, I'll see y'all on Friday. I love y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Tell me what y'all think down below. I'll be reading the comments and I'll talk to you guys soon. Love you guys. Bye.